Good afternoon. I'm talking to you on Tuesday of Holy Week. You, Some of you have asked me uh, about the Sunday uh, sermon. I did indeed sit in this chair and talk for a few minutes about uh, the subject at hand, uh, both Palm Sunday and the Passion dimension of it. But when I was done, I discovered and played it back, when I played it back, that I sounded like, yeah, we're the chick monks, something like that. And I don't think anybody would have wanted to wade through that. I, I certainly didn't. And I was not able to solve that technical problem. A good lesson in humility, I think, for um, anybody who thinks he or she can do things pretty competently. Anywho, uh, here, here, here it is, Tuesday afternoon. And it's a different uh, sent context from where we were on Monday, Sunday morning, even though we were separated. Perhaps some or most of us were able to find a way to worship, to join the Jesus parade into Jerusalem. But now it's Tuesday. Things are a little different. Even Jesus seems a little different. He is... Uh, more recluse, more to himself, as we shall see as we read the scripture. And the scripture for this um, day, actually, the Tuesday of Holy Day, is John. Uh, the scripture from uh, the gospel. It's John chapter 12, verse 20 to 36. Give you time to look it up if you want to if you want to read it along with me. Now, among those who were at their, the festival, there were some uh, Greeks, and um, they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. Uh, uh, and, and therefore a more Greek area of, uh, of, of Israel than, than, uh, than Jerusalem was, uh, was from Bethsaida in, uh, in Galilee. And um, well, they, they, they came up to Philip and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains but just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me the Father will honor. Now, Jesus continued, now is my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now is the ruler of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people unto me. To myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. 
the crowd answered him, we have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you work in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. This is the word of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we have come to your word this day, anxious about many things, anxious about the disease around us, anxious about the future, economic future, of us personally, perhaps, and possibly for this whole country and the whole world. We come with word from Jesus who said his soul is troubled. And in saying that, he fully discovers the human condition into which he has entered and in which he has grown to be an adult. Now, O oh God, help us to hear in your word the word of light from the fully mature Jesus who leads us to his lifting up that we too, as he, may serve and follow him. Serve and follow him. In his name we pray. Amen. In the scripture that um, you just heard, there are echoes of uh, John 1 when uh, some uh, folks come from afar to, the, uh, uh, to a festival and, uh, and, and they are uh, uh, act actually out with John the Baptist. And um, John the Baptist says, Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. And the next day when he saw Jesus coming toward him, he declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I spoke. After me comes a man who is ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. The next day, John was again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched, Jesus walked by. He walked, walked by, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them, following, he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see, come and see what? Come and see this day, this moment, when Jesus says, now my soul is troubled. My soul is troubled. There's not a person here in the sound of my voice who is not troubled because there are troubles all about. And anyone who is not fearful in this time is not in touch with the reality of this time. So now Jesus is troubled. The Son of God is troubled. The one who came from heaven to be like us, is troubled. That scares me. My Jesus is troubled. How can he help me when he's as troubled as I am? But he goes on to say, what should I say? Get me out of this mess. Deliver me so that I can, I can go somewhere and 
be content and away from troubles? No, no, no. Jesus says, it is for this reason. It is for this experience of being troubled. The way these disciples of mine are troubled the way these people who hear me and call me to heal me are heal them are troubled. The way husbands and wives are troubled as they negotiate the waters of marriage. Now my soul is troubled. But Lord, I do not pray that you get me out of this mess. No. I pray that your name be glorified. And when Jesus finished that prayer, he heard a sound from heaven, a voice from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. And the crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered, the voice has come for your sake, for your sake, that you may live life truly in a way that deals with being troubled, accepting being troubled, and moving through the troubles. For Jesus says, when I, when I be lifted up, will call all people unto me. And he goes on to say, <clears throat> that, that, uh, now this is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, I will drive out even death. The light is with you only a little longer. That's an that's a interesting, that's a that's a, a tantalizing verse of scripture. The light will be with me only a little longer. The time of my passing, the time of my dying, is much closer than it was two years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 30, 50 years ago. That time is coming when I shall die. That time is coming when you shall die. That time is coming when we each, in our own time, will face death. And Christ comes to us to say that he has driven out the world, the ruler of this world. And when he goes into that tomb, he goes into that tomb. Not, not as a, as a, a defeated, killed, crucified criminal. No, that's what the world says. But what God says, what we say, because we believe that going into that tomb is the warrior that will conquer death forever. And when he comes forth, he will testify to our resurrection as to his own. But that's Sunday. And this is Tuesday. And interestingly enough, at the end of this passage, in the end of verse 36, is the beginning of a new section, according to the person who, or who edited this Bible I'm looking at. And it's called The Unbelief of the People. But while you have the light, comes right before this, while you have the light, believe the light, so that you may become children of the light, children of the truth, children of the way of Jesus Christ, who is the way and the truth and the life. It's not an easy walk. That's what Jesus is telling us. That's what Jesus is fully recognizing in his, in his, his own cry that his soul is troubled. He's recognizing that this is not an easy life where we are living or called to live. 
it is a life full of risk and danger and self-sacrifice and turning away from what we want to do to do what we hear God telling us God wants us to do. And the good news, the good news, is that when we do that, not necessarily as, as the moment we start doing it, but when we see and, and accept and embrace the call of God to work as his servant, then we are into a different way of living. The Apostle Paul was the first missionary of the the the, the uh, uh, gospel to Europe, as I think we all know. <clears throat> and he f organized the church in Corinth. As he's put it, I planted the seed and Apollos watered. And in the third chapter of, um, of, of 1 Corinthians, verse 18, um, um, Paul writes to the first Corinthians, to the Corinthians, do not deceive yourselves. If you think, if any, do not, do not deceive yourselves. Um, if you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become truly wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written. He catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast about human leaders. No one boasts about human leaders. No human leader is worthy of our boasting. No human leader. Think of it in this way. All things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future all belong to you. All belong to us, Paul is saying. And you, we, belong to Christ. And Christ belongs to God. Think of us in this way. As stewards of Christ, as servants of Christ and stewards of God's minister, mysteries. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. But with me, it is a very small thing that I be judged by you or by any human court. I do not even judge myself. I'm not aware of anything against me. Myself, but I am not thereby, but I am not thereby acquitted. For Christ is the judgment. And as we walk our Christian path, I'd like to I'd like to to read how uh, Eugene Patterson organized that uh, that passage, talking about the servants. Um, in the first verse of chapter four, he says. Don't imagine us leaders to be something we aren't. We are servants of Christ, not his masters. We are guides into God's most sublime secrets, not security guards posted to protect them. The requirements of a good guide are reliability and accurate knowledge. It matters very little to me what you think of me even less where I rank in popular opinion. I don't even rank myself. Comparisons in these matters are fruitless. I am not aware of anything that would disqualify me from being a good guide for you. But that doesn't mean much. The master makes that judgment. And so we walk. 
behind the master, who after he had embraced these Greeks and brought them in and talked to them about walking in the light so that they may be, could become children of light, so that these Greeks might be included in the fellowship, even, even that early in the fellowship. Jesus calls them in to the fellowship and, and, and in, encourages them to walk in the light that they may become children of the light. And in this time, in this time that is so hard and that is so filled with grief, Come on. refrigerated tractor trailers holding coffins or, or, or body bags filled with the people claimed by COVID-19 so fast, so such a, such a pace that the funeral homes can't keep up. What are we to do? What are we to do? Well, I would like to suggest that what we do is hear the fun, hear the third lection of the for today. I think some of you may know it. I know it's a familiar one to me because I I wrote it out in Hebrew, and it's um well where is it now? I don't I don't see where it is right now, but it, it it's I'll see it somewhere. But here's what it says: Psalm seventy one. I'll give you a minute to to find it. Here's the word. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O oh Lord, are my hopes, my trust, O oh Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who brought me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. My praise is continually of God. For even in this terrible disease, the hand of God is at work. It may be the work for the for the punishment that the, some people think that this country deserves, it, it may be it may be at work to guide us into a brand new era of the world that we can't even imagine, and I certainly can. It may simply be a way of God showing us that God is God, and we are not. And if we take nothing else from this sermon but that, that God is God and we are not, then I believe each of us will have received a portion of the truth. And so now let us pray. I'm sorry we don't have the interaction um, that, uh, that we have in, in worship where we have concerns. Um, um, there are some concerns that, that I'm aware of. Uh, um, keep keep uh, praying for, for Doug Watson uh, in, in his uh, waiting for uh, surgery that it's, he cannot have yet. Um,
Well, let's continue to pray for um, some folks that um, that Teresa Boswell put on the list. Nancy Dowdy, Michael Perdue, the family of Barbara Corey, the, the, the family of Roger Wood, uh, and prays that Keith Painter is in remission from pancreatic cancer. So let's take all, oh, and let me, before we go to prayer, I want to say that the Presbytery of New Hope has, is providing an interactive worship service um, the, on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock on, 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 online. And it, it takes some effort to get into it. Um, but um, I'm going to, I'm going to try to get the, the, the link onto um, our webpage um, before, um, before long so that you, so that you can get it. It requires um, you and coming into the meet, the, the, the worship through registration in through zoom, which helps is the ones that uh, is the platform that allows us to come together and talk to with each other. Um, and I will, I will try to get that information to the, to the, to the web, uh, <clears throat> or to the, to the, um, Facebook, uh, church Facebook site. Uh, I may wind up doing it the way I do so much, uh, leaning on Linda or Lynn, <laughs> who are masterful, uh, in their, in their help. But let's go to prayer now and let us, let us remember all the folks who need our prayers. Gracious God in heaven, we come to you. Awed by our weakness in the face of the power of this terrible disease. <clears throat> we come anxious for those we know to be at the edge of death, perhaps not a, perhaps not to cross over, but to come mighty close. Particularly, we pay, play for, pay for, pray for Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, who is now in intensive care. We pray for all those, Lord, who have contracted this disease. And we ask you that though they may be angry with you for allowing them to correct, collect, to, 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 to experience infection, help them to see that in their infection, they have an opportunity and a responsibility and a duty to keep it to themselves in as much as possible. So help us also, O oh God, to keep washing our hands. Now it appears to wear a cloth mask whenever we go out. Help us, O oh God, as we are hidden the way Jesus hid himself on the Tuesday of Holy Week. May we find solace and new insights into living with you as Christians and each other as Christians, that we may, O oh God, be ready for the cross that now looms so near. And let us pray, O oh God, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the and the glory forever, Amen. Um, I had I, I have received from the pastor um, of uh, Can Memorial Church, which is up in 
uh, or over in Elizabeth City, uh, Elizabeth Whitmer, um, <clears throat> a, 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 a Holy Week devotional. And uh, it's quite, quite extensive. And I don't know whether we can better get it onto the, um, um, uh, the, the, the website or not. Uh, but um, I will uh, I will try to again see what Lynn and Linda can help me with and uh, and and do with that. But for now, Lord, bless us and keep us. Take us in the direction you would have us to go. Uphold us when we are weary in working your will. But not hold, knock us down and put us into our place when we think we know what's right out of our own human knowledge and in all things lord be our blessing our grace our humility and our love through jesus christ our lord